Hey guys, so um, today we're doing something just a little bit different. Uh, welcome back to the channel firstly. Um, we're going to be looking today at a couple of new things. Um, something I've been wanting to try alongside the divisions in various campaigns is various panzer divisions in general. Um, so we're going to start off with what can be considered a pretty intensive one. This um, this is going to be a video regarding the 9th SS Panzer Division at Hohenstaufen. Um, so, yeah, I will be taking this one rather seriously because of who they are. But, regardless of which, uh, take yourselves in, get a tea or a coffee ready, let's do this. So, the 9th SS Panzer Division is formed alongside its sister division, the 10th SS Panzer Division, in France in February of 1943. These two divisions do share a very similar history. Um, they're pretty much formed at the same time and with the same people for the same reason. Um, despite this, however, they do end up having very significantly different impacts upon the war. So the both of them are primarily formed from conscripts which are drawn from the Reich Labour Service. So the Reich Labour Service was in effect Germany's first attempt, or the Nazi Party's first attempt, should I say, to counter unemployment in Germany in the 1930s. The Reich Labour Service had been set up primarily to provide a paying government funded service to people who were willing to work. It had remained in service throughout most of the early parts of the war. By 1943, however, it was filled with young men who were not necessarily part of the Hitler Jugend divisions or the, uh, the, Hitler, the Hitler Youth, um, sorry, the Hitler Youth formations, but were still in a very fit and very capable of fighting. As a result, most of the men who were drawn to both Hohenstaufen and the 10th SS were from a very young background. They had virtually no combat experience, but they were very fit, they were very young, and a lot of them were still quite dedicated to the fight. To counter the lack of experience, which was clearly coming out of the division, the NCOs and officer staff were drawn largely from more experienced SS divisions. You're looking at Leibstand, Data, Tottenkampf, and Das Reich as being the primary ones, as these are the most, quote-unquote, fanatical divisions. Initially, the division is classified as a Panzergrenadier division when it is formed in February. It's similar to the Deutsch Deutschland division. Uh, it, it is, however, then upgraded to a full-size Panzer division in October 1943, coming along as a response to the horrendous armoured losses that had been suffered on the Eastern Front. You know, the Battle of Kursk has just ended. The Germans need to replace a lot of their armoured forces, and they need more armoured units in the field. So, thus the 9th and the 10th are both upgraded. This change would bring the divisional strength to around 19,000 men, uh, which would continue to form up and train into 1944. The division itself would train up and well, form and train for pretty much over a year. It, this would be a, a hugely influential to the performance the division would then have in its time. It is important to note by 1943 that the SS divisions in general have gone from being a rather unreliable force um, to one of the most disciplined and elite units of the entire Reich. At the start of the Poland campaign, most SS units are just completely unreliable and just they'll just go away and do their own thing. Um, but by 1943, 44, they're like they are elite. They are like second to none in terms of what the S in terms of what the Nazis have at their disposal. The 9th SS, along with its sister division, would be deployed to the Eastern Front in March of 1945. Erich von Manstein had personally requested the two divisions to assist him in rescuing the 1st Panzer Army, which had become trapped by Soviet forces in the Camden's Polonsky Pocket in Ukraine. Upon arrival, the two divisions would form up and would be designated as the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, a title that had been previously held by the 1st, 2nd and 3rd SS Panzer Divisions at the Battle of Kursk. They would be ordered to attack near Tarnopol. They would fight a three-day battle against Soviet forces trying to break through to the 1st Panzer Army. They would really distinguish themselves in this action. Uh, accounts estimate they destroyed uh, 
the, the rough numbers are they they destroyed 74 Soviet tanks, 84 self-propelled guns, 21 anti-tank guns, and 12 mortars. The division was successful to, in in fighting its way through to the first Panzer Army at uh, Bukak uh, and help and would help it escape. Though most of the first Panzer Army would uh, have to abandon its heavy equipment as a result of the breakout. Um, this battle is actually rather well known for being. Uh, it's it's more well known for being. Um, what's it? The Stalingrad of the Dnieper, except it never fully materialised. During the battles around Tarnopol, the Ninth would suffer uh, one thousand and eleven confirmed casualties. For the rest of their time in Ukraine, the division would remain in reserve until around June 1944, when following the Allied invasion of Normandy, the 2nd SS Panzer Corps was pulled out of Ukraine and was sent west to deal with the new threat. Hohenstaufen's arrival in Normandy was significantly delayed by repeated Allied air attacks and breakdown, uh, meaning that they didn't, didn't really reach the fighting area until around the 26th of June, but even then, 50% of its tanks hadn't reached the fighting. Um, this is largely because the Germans couldn't just train them in the Khan, uh, on They had to send them by train to Paris, they had to offload at Paris, then drive to the front. This was the same issue that had been suffered by Panzer divisions coming from the Calais sector. You can't simply just ship them all on trains, it doesn't work like that. Initially, the um, so initially to compensate for the losses, the 9th SS is given the 102nd SS Heavy Panzer Battalion on the, uh, in order to make up for the losses, but this wouldn't be really tied in until the 2nd of August, so they would end up fighting throughout most of June and July with just what they had. The initial objective of the 9th SS was to attack the British beachhead and drive the Commonwealth forces back into the sea. Those were including the British, Canadian, uh, some French, South Africans, whatever you can think of landing on D-Day, which was under the British under the British Commonwealth flag. Yeah, they were going after that lot. This was made impossible by the launching of Operation Epson, which forced the Germans onto the defensive. In the four-day offensive that the Allies would launch, the 9th would suffer 1,891 casualties and would be pulled into reserve after being replaced by the 277th Infantry Division. So their initial plan of driving the British in, into the sea gets completely thrown off by Operation Epsom. The fighting had shattered the division's Panzer Grenadier units, which were all combined to form a single Panzer Grenadier regiment named Hohenstaufen. The, Gren the SS Grenadiers in Normandy were notorious for being very fanatical of fighting to the end. Everyone thinks of oh, the Hitler Jugend divisions as being one of the worst, but Hohenstaufen was just as bad in terms of its fanaticism and its defensive will. Um, the difference is, however, is that Hohenstaufen, unlike Hitler Jugend, wouldn't commit itself to stupid and unwinnable tactical situations. The Hitler Jugend was rather notorious for that. The division would then be in action during Operation Goodwood, but wouldn't play a leading role. They would be kept in reserve. The 1st and the 12th SS would take the brunt of the Allied offensive. It would, however, play a more leading role during Operation Jupiter on the 10th and 11th of July, where it would try and hold the entire wrath of British 8th Corps as it attacked over the Orne River trying to secure bridges for the entire British 2nd Army. Attacking over open ground near Falaise, the British would run into the 10th SS holding Hill 112, capturing several villages in the process. The 9th SS was in the process of being pulled off the line, but had suddenly been thrown back in uh, when the British had been seen crossing the Orne River. Despite being hammered by naval and air attacks constantly, they continued to attack the British line in tank engagements taking place at less than 1,000 yards. At such distances, the 75mm and 88mm weapons that were available to the division could penetrate even the frontal armour of Churchill heavy tanks, or shape charged weapon attacks from really aggressive Panzer Grenadiers as well as Sturm Pioneers also inflicted heavy losses. This was further helped by the effectiveness of German armour at such ranges which really gave them the upper hand. The fighting around the Orne River really does highlight 
the effectiveness of German heavy armour. They completely blunt the British offensive and again their Panzer Grenadiers are fanatically aggressive in this assault. They go after the British tanks at close range, they charge down infantry who are, who are coming forward. You know, 8th Corps really doesn't have the best time. The 9th would suffer 746 casualties in the fighting. By the end, they would go from 19 Panzer Falls, 50 Panthers and 25 Stugs, down to 13 Panzer Falls, 35 Panthers and 12 Stug 3s. In return, they would inflict 2,000 ca yeah, 2, casualties on the 43rd Division, who had been at the brunt of the fighting, and they would destroy 39 enemy tanks of the 31st Tank Brigade, which would reduce the strength of the 31st by 25%. Following Operation Jupiter, the division was caught up in the opening stages of Operation Total Eyes, which would be the assault to try and cut off Falaise. They would escape the Falaise Gap and would end up holding open the narrow escape route until the 21st, uh, when, they would, when they would, along with other German forces in Normandy, begin a headlong retreat for the German border, fighting several rearguard actions in the process. It's important to note that the 9th SS wasn't in as bad a state as many other divisions. They weren't the Hitler Jugend who'd suffered like 90% casualty rates. They weren't the first SS who were hurried back because they because German High Command just didn't want to lose them. They were very staunch, they were very determined, and they were very, very, very stubborn. And they continued to fight rearguard actions very effectively all the way up to the German border. By September, the division has withdrawn completely from the front and it's actually pulled to Arnhem for rest and refit, uh, that's in Holland. Its numbers were down to just 7,000 fighting men from the original 19,000 it had arrived with in June, uh, and most of its armoured vehicles are then stripped back to Germany for repair. Uh, it means that the division has just 30 armoured vehicles assigned to it as part of Recon Company 9. The rest of them are either in trucks or on foot. Rest would not last long, however. On the 17th of September 1944, the Allies would launch Operation Market Garden, part of the Allied offensive to rescue cross the Rhine and get into northern Germany, end the war by Christmas. British 1st Airborne Division would land at Arnhem. The existence of a 9th SS in the area was a bit of a surprise to the troops on the ground and, most importantly, a serious issue. It's important to note that Allied High Command was aware of the 9th SS's existence around Arnhem, but because they had only been discovered to be there three days before the offensive was meant to take place, they did nothing. They sort of hid the fact and they sort of put it to one side. Despite the fact that they were in a really poor shape, the 9th SS was by this point highly experienced and was still very motivated. They didn't waste any time, and they, they took on the 1st Airborne Division despite the fact that they were actually rather outnumbered. Despite being only, uh, their only armoured forces basically being destroyed in combat with the 1st Airborne Division, uh, trying to cross the bridge, the island bridge, the 9th SS was successful in forcing the surrender of the paratroopers. Um, they had to fight for several days in order to actually make this happen but they were ultimately very successful in doing this. Um, the paratroopers who had, had landed with 10,095 men had around 7,000 casualties. Uh, 3,000 roughly would escape back uh, towards Allied line and had to be rebuilt all over again. After their success at Arnhem, the 9th SS was withdrawn to Paderborn for refitting, spending until December off the line getting its forces back up to full strength, incorporating other units, getting its tanks back. And then on the 12th of December, it is moved to Munsterfeld to act as a reserve for the 6th SS Panzer Army under Sepp Dietrich. It then will be taking part as part, you know, it would then be taking part of Operation Wacht on Rhine, also known as the Ardennes Offensive. The division would be committed on the 21st of December to help break through positions held by the 82nd Airborne. It would ultimately fail in this. The 6th SS Panzer Army is one of the least successful of the three army groups that take part in Operation Vactum Rhine. They are too slow, they are too heavy, they consume far too much fuel, and ultimately, they really, really, really 
just suck. They do just suck. By comparison to them, who has all the good gear, the Fifth Panzer Army, which is the Wehrmacht Army taking taking part in the operation, which is which is next to them, has far more success because it doesn't rely on so much heavy armor. It doesn't have so many King Tigers, Tigers, Panthers, whatever. It is far more mobile. Ultimately, the division would move south to help the assault on Bastogne, but would again be unable to break through and would lose most of its equipment to air attacks once the skies had cleared. On the 7th of January, Hitler calls off the Ardennes offensive and moves instead to consolidate all forces at Longchamps in Belgium. Throughout the rest of January, the division is withdrawn again to Germany and begins another refit. At the end of February, the division was sent to Hungary as part of the 6th SS Panzer Army to take part in Operation Spring Awakening, which is the last major German offensive of World War II. As, the, as one of five SS units available for the operation, it was given as much equipment as possible in order to complete this objective. And by 1945, they were equipped with a mix of tanks and assault guns. You're talking the Panther, the Panther G, the Panzer IV Aust of H's and J's, Stug 3's and Stug 40 Aust of G's, Stu's, well, basically whatever the Wehrmacht can get its hands on is given to the SS, pretty much. By 1945, however, the strength of every Panzer division is significantly less than what it should be. Despite the impressive list of divisions that actually make up the attack, I mean, you're talking the 1st SS, the 12th SS, the 10th SS, the 9th SS, I believe the 2nd SS is also involved. There is 11 Panzer divisions in total, including the 5 SS ones. However, they have enough armour in them as a total to make up 1.7 divisions. There are 11 divisions involved. And this is the problem you have with late war Germany. It has all these divisions, but it has none of the equipment for them. So as part of Operation Spring Awakening, the 9th would spearhead the advance, driving forward as part of the 9th SS Panzer Army. They initially make really good progress, but upon getting close to the Danube, a combination of muddy terrain and fierce Soviet resistance made further progress difficult, and soon the entire offensive had been ground to a halt. The offensive is effectively called off on the 15th of March 1945 and the 6th SS Panzer Army had been nearly surrounded by a massive Soviet counterattack and had to fight its way out. Hohenstaufen, in the thick of it, would, be, would again be fighting at the head of the breakout and would destroy 80 enemy tanks in the process. The 6th SS Panzer Army would then retreat to Vienna. A little side note about this. Hitler, by this point, who was obviously stark raving mad, he was never a sane individual to begin with, but nowadays, he, but by 1945, he's absolutely stark raving mad. He's so furious with the failure of Operation Spring Awakening, despite the absolutely insurmountable odds of those fighting it, he orders Sepp Dietrich to command all SS forces involved, including his beloved Leibstandarte, to remove their cuff ties. These mark their SS heraldry. This order is ultimately not followed by Dietrich, as he is, while he is a committed Nazi and he's fervently loyal to Hitler, he knows that this order is completely stupid and would only hamper the morale of his forces more. By May 1st, the 9th SS was in the Steyr Amstein area in Austria and is making for a final defence of the territory. A week later, on May 8th, the 9th SS would surrender to American forces that had entered Austria following the end or following the capitulation of the German armed forces. A little side note here regarding the 9th SS. They are SS and therefore they are deplorable buggers. But the 9th SS actually ends the war with a really quite respectable combat record. There are cases of war crime amongst the division, but they are more individual acts committed by individuals in groups of two or three. The division as a whole doesn't really carry out war crimes. They are actually one of what can be dubbed the more professional SS units. To be honest with you, if you'd have put these guys in a in the here division or made them a regular army division, you wouldn't have known the difference. They were actually really quite they were really quite professional in the way they conduct themselves. I'm not going to say they're good, because they weren't bloody good, they were still Nazis. 
but they weren't really Nazis so much by choice. They were Nazis because they were part of a Nazi policy, and they had and they and they had to basically get shoved into this Panther division. So the Ninth SS ultimately, a lot of, a lot of them do escape the war crimes and tribunals because there's no real there's not enough evidence against any of them to really prosecute and commit them because they haven't really done anything so ultimately that is the ninth ss thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video i hope to see you guys in the next one have a good day